Welcome to Relevance for Today, a show where you will be encouraged, inspired, and fed through the Word of God. You will find relevant teachings, tips, discussions, interviews, and more for both believers and even non-believers who are considering salvation through Jesus Christ. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in as always to Relevance for Today. I've got a great show for you. Dug this one out of the tool chest. Great message, very important message that I truly felt needed to be shared again. Stay tuned, folks. It's going to be a good one. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless. Hey, folks, Steve Lewis here. Welcome to Relevance for today. Thanks for tuning in for part two of the grieving experience, an experience that I share about how I'm going through the grieving process after losing my mom in March of 2019 this year. Stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Okay, so folks, here we are again talking about the grieving experience. We are in Fredericton, Grand Lake, relaxing with some friends. I've done a couple of podcasts here before where I was sitting by the water. Beautiful day outside. Uh, Becky's little Pomeranians are out there barking at all the cars going past, so I figured I better come inside and do this message. So today I'm going to be sharing some nuggets for you as well as for me on grieving. My dad gave me a really neat link to some folks called Grief Share online, griefshare.org, and they send me a daily email every day, which is very encouraging and uplifting, and I want to share one with you that I got the other day. It's very important. I'm also going to be sharing a short passage out of Living the Proverbs Day by Day. It's a 365 daily devotional, and there's a portion in here that talks about encouragement and who to hang around and who to be around, especially in this time and stage in our lives. So for Barb and I, for starters, this grieving period for me, like I've mentioned in part one, and if you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to take the time to listen to it. Great message. I know I've learned a lot. I thank you to all those out there who've listened to it and who have actually written some great feedback for me, as well as some encouragement for me and some tips on grieving as well. So thank you for that. So with that being said, let's dig right in. I think I'm going to go ahead and share with you first the email I received the other day. I'm going to be using my tablet and it's from the daily emails from Grief Share. So here we go. Grief is a unique experience. Talked about that the other day and it is. It's different for all of us. It's different for you. It's different for me. Um, some of you shared like Debbie from Fort Fairfield shared how grief comes in waves. You'll be sitting there some days and all of a sudden it'll hit you. You sit in another day and everything will be fine. When you feel like crying, you're crying. You cry, you know, you just go through it. And uh, all right, so here we go. Grief share. Here it is. Grief is a unique experience. This was day number two. You may feel it is useless to talk about your grief because no one truly understands what you are going through. You sometimes feel after an experience like this that you are talking a foreign language says Dara, Dora, whose daughter died. You feel like there's no way anybody can know what you're feeling. There's absolutely no way anyone can know the depth of your pain, so you feel like it's futile to talk about it because words can't express the pain. Although countless people have experienced grief before you, each person's response to grief is different. And we talked about that before, and that's really an important statement. Your path of grief will be uniquely your own, be encouraged that regardless of how your grief appears to you or others, it has a precious uniqueness to the one who created you and me. God, who knows intimately your personality, your relationships, and the experiences of your life, he knows your grief and isn't shocked or surprised by your responses. And then this passage, this email closes with this. It says, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. 
every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Now those are nuggets, little snippets from Psalm 139. There's verse 1, verse 14, and verse 16. And he combined them all with some periods in between. And I'll read those again because those are really important. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. And it closes with this prayer. Father, thank you that my own, that my way of grieving is distinctly my own, reflective of all you have sovereignly created me to be and experience. Amen. So that is, and that's www.griefshare.org. It's all one word, griefshare, G-R-I-E-F-S-H-A-R-E. So there you have it. Those emails are great. They come in every day. Like I said, dad got me hooked on that. Um, you, as soon as you go to get your emails, poof, there it goes. You've got your grief share email, you get to read it and you get to relate to what's going on. And it does help because the grieving process, sometimes you'll be with others. Sometimes you'll be alone. It all depends on the environment and it all depends on who you're around, which is why I've also got the living the Proverbs day by day, because I want to share with you a reading out of this one, which really makes a lot of sense. It really touched my heart to read it this morning. Um, this was from the other day, May 24th. Finding encouragement. Haven't I commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord, your God is with you wherever you go, wherever you go, Whatever you're going through, remember, if you have Jesus Christ in your life, the Lord is with you. So it goes on, and that was Joshua 1, 9, 1, chapter 1, verse 9. I know this is a Proverbs book. They did share a proverb in here, but it didn't really relate to talking about grieving. But what I do want to share with you is the portion that they wrote in here. So basically in the book, as you can see, they'll have a verse, they'll have some writing in there. It's a great book to have. Uh, it's good. It's handy. This one's by worthyinspired.com. I'm advertising for everybody, but it's great. It's good. I love it when people share in their videos about what they're reading, um, the publisher name and so forth. So we can look up and share it with one another. That's what it's all about using, like I said before, using social media, using the internet and everything to reach out and be a blessing to help others so we can learn from one another and to share the word of God. So here's what the write-up says. And of course the title was finding encouragement. So it says, God offers us the strength to meet our challenges and he offers us hope for the future. One way that he shares his message of hope is through the words of encouraging friends and family members. Very important encouraging word from family members and friends. But listen to this part. Hope like other human emotions is contagious. If we associate with hope filled, enthusiastic people, their enthusiasm will have a tendency to lift our spirits up. You know what I'm talking about? You get around certain individuals who are very encouraging. I call it having the Barnabas spirit where like Barnabas went around, he encouraged the apostles and the disciples, disciples. He came alongside them, encouraged them and lift them up to where God wanted them to be. So that's very important. So I'll read that again. Hope like other human emotions is contagious. If we associate with hope filled, enthusiastic people, their enthusiasm will have a tendency to lift our spirits. But this is very important in the grieving process, folks. But if we find ourselves spending too much time in the company of naysayers, pessimists or cynics, our thoughts will tend to be negative. That's very important. And I want to just pause right there. There's a couple more sentences left, but I want to pause right there and just share on that because that is very important. If you're hanging around, you're going through the grieving process and I've learned this. I'm talking from experience. And like I said, this grieving process just started for my mother. You know, my wife's parents passed away years ago. We went through that grieving process. Of course, this was a little bit different because it was my blood mother. So it was a different experience. But in that, what I'm getting at is, it's very important that you hang around positive people, especially in the grieving process. If you're not 
rubbing shoulders with positive people, it is going to cripple you in a way that I'm sure some of you already know what I'm talking about. You'll go from thinking about, you know, from in my case, thinking about my mother, focusing on just thinking about the good things and then come alongside someone who's negative, whether it's about the weather, whatever's going on in their life and woe is me and the whole nine yards. And just like it said in that passage, it said, if we find ourselves spending too much time in the company of naysayers, pessimists, or cynics, our thoughts will tend to be negative. So then once we become negative, then we start having an attitude and then sometimes we will bring off those same negative feelings towards other people. And what will turn around from being a grieving moment will turn into you being a pain in the behind and people not wanting anything to do with you. So that's very important. Find encouraging people. You already know who they are. And then also, if you don't know anyone who can encourage you, ask the Lord, you know, Heavenly Father, send me someone who's going to encourage me and lift me up so that this grieving process won't be so hard. And you'll have people that will come around you and help you out and be there for you. And you, it's great to look for people who have lost loved ones, who are able to get out of it, or who are still going through the grieving process, but still have an awesome outlook on life. So that's very important. So this passage wraps up with saying, are you a hopeful, optimistic Christian? And do you associate with like-minded people? If so, then you're both wise and blessed. So that's very important, folks. Um, I'm learning that as part of this grieving process for my wife and I. Once we realized what was going on and how busy we were, we put a stop to it. In fact, that morning, we both felt some negativity in the air. It was kind of funny. My wife and I have been married for almost 28 years now. And so, as most of you know, when you're married that long, you can feel each other's emotions. So I could sense she was stressed out. And then I was getting a little bit stressed out. But the nice part is instead of us bumping heads about anything, we actually sat down, refocused. And before you know it, we were sitting back at our favorite restaurant in a local town eating our favorite meals. She was having her lobster roll and I was having some shrimp and clams and fries. You know how it is when you're going through those grieving moments where you just want to eat something good and exciting. So that's what we did. And we laughed and we talked and we realized that we had put too much on our plates, especially with mom only being passed away two months and a couple days. It was very important that we do that. And that's when we decided to come down to Fredericton and stay with our friends. They're more like family, the Haynes family. They are awesome. We can come out here and relax by the water and just put our feet up and not have a care in the world. And it takes a load off and you have to do that sometimes you're going through the grieving process and you know of a place you can go and just be at peace and relax away from the world, do that. I highly recommend that. That's very important. So keep that in mind as well. It's all about relaxing your mind, resting your mind. You know, if you're in your home, you're thinking about all the things that you should be doing and I need to do yard work and I need to do this, I need to do that. But when you're not there, you can just focus, you know, get in the word, read some scripture, pray, relax, listen to some peaceful music. There's so many things. Just sit outside and listen to nature. Listen to the birds. Just relax and be at peace. So it's very important. So with that being said, that's all I have today. I just wanted to share on those two things. I definitely wanted to share about the Grief Share website. That's fantastic. Um, Like I said, my father told me about it as well as some folks on Twitter as well. It's definitely a great link. You can sit in the privacy of your own home and you can go through the grieving process each day by reading some great advice for you as well. And then once again, like I said, as a refresher on that as well, get around someone who can encourage you, people who will lift you up, not people who are going to drain you. You know, if people are calling you because they want this and they want that and gimme, 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 just don't answer the phone. Let people leave you a message. You need to focus on you. Very important. There's nothing wrong. And this is something for me. Remember what I've said, like what Tommy Donaldson said, when he's pointing one finger at you, he's got three pointing back at himself. It's very important when I say this. Get around encouraging folks. Clear your mind. Don't let people suck you dry. If people are going to call you just because they want things for selfish reasons, just don't answer the phone like I said before. They can leave you a message. 
You focus on you. It is okay to focus on yourself and take time out for yourself. Don't have to be a superman, don't have to be a superwoman and try to save the world. Go through your grieving process. Take your time. It's your life, it's your time. God knows your heart. And with that being said, that's it. Let's go ahead and pray, folks. So Heavenly Father, I thank you once again, as always, for this opportunity to share about your word, to share a message that's both hitting me personally, but I know it's hitting others that are out there listening and watching. Lord, I ask that you give us peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you so much for giving us your son and giving us salvation so that we may walk in, the, walk in the path that you've called us to walk on. But Lord, during this grieving process that we we're all having to go through, some have lost loved ones. In fact, the same time my mother passed away, some of my listeners have also lost family members within the last couple months or this year, they've lost family members. Give them peace as well, Lord. We thank you so much for all the blessings. Thank you so much for the opportunity to reach people all over the world with messages that are gonna just change their lives as well as mine. Thank you, thank you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. There you have it, folks, part two of the grieving experience. I am probably just gonna make um, one more portion, and it's gonna be tips on how to react, how to relate to someone who's lost loved ones. I've read some great tips and advice on how to and what to and what to say and what not to say. It's gonna be a great message. I hope you'll stay tuned to it. Be sure to subscribe and share, folks. Please leave some more comments. It was really encouraging and uplifting for me to read your comments on part one of this short three-part series. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Take care of yourselves. Peace. Hey, there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Hope you enjoyed the show. Look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget about checking out kingdomcommunity.tv. We have the TV show. We'd love for you to get over there and you can subscribe to the channel. You can even donate to the channel if you want to help us in the ministry, but you can just listen and watch all the shows that we've got posted. We also want to encourage you to make sure you not only listen to my shows, but check out some other shows on Kingdom Community TV as well. We got great ministers, great teachings, great, great teachings. I can't share that enough. Awesome stuff. Also, don't forget about Relevance for Today podcast show as well on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Libsyn, you name it, we're out there. Just get any app on your phone, any podcast app, and you can watch us and listen to us at any time at your convenience while you're working, while you're running, while you're jogging, while you're driving, whatever it may be. Hey, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to leave us a rating if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts. The, help, the ratings help us a lot. Really appreciate it. Gets people, gets us in the cycle. So more people want to listen to us. More people want to watch us. Hey, with that being said, share us with a friend and family. Hey, God bless you all. Love you. Thanks for tuning in. Take care of yourselves. Peace.